Here's the problem that we're going to solve in today's video. This is an F4 based flight controller. Now that's not inherently a problem. Lots of flight controllers have F4 processors in them. They work just fine and they save you a little bit of money. But the limitation of an F4 based processor is that it often doesn't have the same number and flexibility of UARTs as an F7 based processor. And what that means is that you sometimes don't have enough UARTs to do all the things that you want to do. For example, this flight controller has two full UARTs. And that means that if I'm using an HD0 video transmitter and an Express LRS receiver, then there is not another UART left to let me wire up a GPS. And yet, I am in fact using all three of those things at the same time on this build. How? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you're dying to get to the solution of the problem, because like, for example, maybe you have this exact flight controller and you just want me to get to the point, Bardwell, there are chapter markers in the video and you can skip ahead to the solution. But I want to give a little bit of background first because of who I am as a person to those people who don't know why an F4 processor is limited in the way that it is. Because if we look at this Xylo Stax flight controller, we can see that there are TX4 and RX4, that's UART number four, and uh, TX3 and RX3, that's UART number three, and that's basically it, but it's not. Because if we go to the user manual for this flight controller, we can see that it actually has a full complement of UARTs. There's SBUS and DSM2 on UART 1, whatever that is. There's Smart Audio on UART 5. There's F port and Smart port on UART 6. So there's a full complement of UARTs here, but they're not broken out on the board. On the other hand, if we go look at this SpeedyB F405 flight controller, it is also an F4 flight controller. But if we scroll down to the wiring diagram, we can see that there's UART2, UART3, UART1, UART6. There's just a bunch of TX and RX pads, just like you'd see on any other flight controller. But there are still some of these oddball pads, like this telemetry pad and this SBUS pad. What's going on there? What's going on there is that the F4 processor has these UARTs that you're gonna wire things up to. These are built into the F4 processor. They're not something that the flight controller designer makes. They're just literally a part of the chip. And these UARTs may or may not support a feature called inversion. Inversion means that you've got this serial data protocol coming in and serial protocols consist of ones or zeros. And that's usually encoded by voltage that is either high or low. And yeah, I know that real serial data protocols don't literally just encode as high as a one and low as a zero. They actually have some more complicated stuff going on. But for the sake of example, we'll assume that like high voltage, 3.3 volts is a one, zero volts is a zero, and then the signal goes up and down to encode the ones and zeros that are being transmitted into the UART. Uh, but some serial protocols for reasons that we will not get into in this video, do it the other way around like zero volts is a one and 3.3 volts is a zero. Why would you do that? Again, we're not gonna get into that. That's called an inverted serial protocol. And the UARTs on the processor have to support inversion, otherwise they can't understand the inverted serial protocol. And it turns out that the UARTs on an F7 processor all support inversion. So when a signal comes in, it can be either inverted or non-inverted, it doesn't matter, the F7 processor can deal with it. And that means that on F7 processors, almost all of the time, the UARTs aren't designated for any particular thing. You've just got TX1, RX1, TX2, RX2, TX3, RX3, and so on and so on and so on. And you wire your receiver up here and your video transmitter up there, but it kind of doesn't matter, you can put anything anywhere. But it turns out that the UARTs on an F4 processor do not support inversion. This is a decision that was made by the manufacturer of the STM32 F405 or F411 chip. That manufacturer did not build that capability in. And that's fine as long as we're dealing with serial protocols that aren't inverted. For example, Crossfire, not an inverted serial protocol, works fine with an F4, works fine with an F7. But protocols like SBUS, is the biggest one. SBUS is inverted serial. So at some point in the past, FreeSky or 
really it was probably Futaba because I think Futaba invented SBUS, but someone decided that SBUS was going to be an inverted serial protocol and that means that an F4 chip cannot receive an SBUS signal. F port, if you're using F port with FreeSky users, F port, inverted serial, cannot work with an F4 flight control. Obviously that's silly. Obviously it does work. Obviously you can use SBUS with an F4 flight controller. How? That's that's the conundrum. What manufacturers of F4 flight controllers do is they put a special pad on the flight controller called the SBUS pad. And in between this pad and whichever pin on this processor that pad is connected to, maybe it's this one. This is the UART1 RX pin, and it can only take a non-inverted serial signal. And between that pin and this pad is an electric device called an inverter and it inverts the signal. So SBUS comes in this pad and it is inverted serial and it goes through the inverter and now it is not inverted serial and now the F4 processor can handle it. But that signal can only be understood by the processor if it comes in this specific pad and goes through an inverter and then goes to the RX1 pin. If you were wired up to RX3 or RX4, by the time it got to the F4 processor, it would still be inverted and the processor wouldn't be able to understand it. And that's why on most F4 flight controllers, we'll have a dedicated SBUS pad and a dedicated smart port pad. And those are for the inverted uh, FreeSky protocols, SBUS and smart port or F port. And they will be wired to a UART on the microprocessor through an inverter. And that's kind of a waste. It's kind of a waste. Sure, if you're using FreeSky, uh, yeah, yeah, then obviously, great. But the days when most people used FreeSky are long gone. Most people these days use Crossfire or ExpressLRS. And so these pads are just kind of wasted. Because like, unlike on the SpeedyBee flight controller, where there was an SBUS pad and it was connected to UART1 RX through an inverter, but there was also an R1 pad that was connected to UART1 RX not through an inverter. On this flight controller, if you're not using SBUS, UART1 just, pfft, you can't use it. That's the situation in which we find ourselves. We have a flight controller that because of the way an F4 chip works, there are certain UARTs that just aren't usable unless you're using FreeSky and we're not. How are we gonna get around that? In order to get around that problem, we're gonna plug in USB to our flight controller, we're gonna power up our receiver, and we're gonna wait for it to go into Wi-Fi mode. That'll be indicated by a fast flashing LED, and will take about 60 seconds. If you're impatient, you can actually hold down the button on the receiver until it begins fast flashing, and it'll force it into Wi-Fi mode immediately. After that happens, we can go to our computer Wi-Fi networks, and we can look for the ExpressLRS RX Wi-Fi network. We'll connect to that with the password ExpressLRS. I believe it's all lowercase. I can never remember if it's a capital E or a lowercase C, but it's ExpressLRS is the password. Once we do that, the web page that we're looking for may auto load. On some computers, it seems to auto load. On others, it doesn't. But we want to go to 10.0.0.1 in our web browser. And we should see this. Now, you're going to notice that I'm on firmware 301. And the way that this works is different depending on if you're on firmware 3.3 or 3. something else. But if you're on firmware up to, th but not including 3.3, what you're going to do is you're going to go down here and choose invert TX pin. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the signal coming out of the TX pin on the receiver. And instead of it being uninverted serial, it will now be inverted serial. Think about this. Normally, the TX pad on the receiver would go to the RX pad on the flight controller. That would be an uninverted signal and everything would work fine. If we were to wire that TX pad up to the SBUS pad on the flight controller, that would be good because the SBUS pad is wired to UART1 and it would free up one of the other UARTs for some other use. But it wouldn't work because the SBUS pad goes through an inverter and the signal would be inverted when it gets to the microprocessor. But if we invert the signal coming out of the receiver, then when it goes in the SBUS pad and goes through the inverter again, it will actually be uninverted See, we're double inverting it. And that means it's uninverted when it gets to the processor. And that means that we can use the SBUS pad to receive a, a Express LRS or Crossfire signal. And that's the power of this method. So we enable that. Now, if we look at the user manual for this flight controller, we can see that SBUS 
is connected to UART1RX, and the DSM pad is connected to UART1TX. And this is going to be a little bit difficult for you to follow because I haven't pulled the whole quadcopter apart to show you the wiring. But if we take the TX wire from the receiver and connect it to the SBUS pad, and the RX wire from the receiver and connect it to the DSM pad, it means that we can get a full Express LRS crossfire signal into this flight controller and we're, we're, we freed up a UART completely without really any compromises. This is a big deal because this S bus pad here on the flight controller, it isn't really restricted to just receiving an S bus signal. It can work with any inverted serial signal. It just turns out there aren't very many of them other than S bus. But since we can tell the Express LRS receiver to output an inverted signal, we can use it with that S bus pad and we're good to go. And in fact, you can do this with any F4 flight controller that has an S bus pad. Many of them will not have the corresponding DSM pad. So many of them, you will wire only the TX wire to the S bus pad and leave the RX wire unused. And in that case, you won't get telemetry back from the flight controller, which is not the best, but maybe it's an acceptable compromise for certain situations. Now, if you are on firmware 3.3 or newer, the way that you set this up has changed slightly and you have access to one additional capability that some of you might be interested in. So if we scroll down here, you'll notice that there is no invert TX option. Instead, we're gonna go to the model tab and in the model tab, we're gonna choose our serial protocol. And one serial protocol could be inverted crossfire. And that is uh, the same as the invert TX option that I just showed you. But you'll notice that we also have the option for S bus and inverted S bus. Yes, you can make your crossfire or your express LRS receiver output standard S bus, which is inverted, or inverted S bus, which is not inverted. What, uh, which is all completely backwards and confusing. Why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you've got a device that literally only understands an S bus signal. I don't know what that might be. It's not a typical Betaflight flight controller because they all speak Crossfire and various other things. But if you've got a device that literally needs an S bus signal, not an inverted Crossfire signal going into an S bus pad, no, 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 an actual S bus signal, then you can actually have your Express LRS receiver output that S bus signal and it'll wire up the TX wire to that as well, which you could do. Oh, you know what? I did this. Of course, I did this when I built my uh, Pixhawk flight controller. The Pixhawk flight controller wanted, they can support Crossfire, but it's, I couldn't get it working. And, and so I just used an S bus signal and boom, it just worked. So you have the option in 3.3 or newer to output inverted Crossfire as I showed you or S bus or a few other things too, although that'll be a topic for a different video, I suppose. This video is kind of technical and nerdy, but in a way it's my favorite kind of video to make because it helps people solve a problem that it just feels like you've hit a brick wall. Your flight controller has two UARTs. You have three things that you want to wire up. Sorry, screw you, you're done. You can't proceed. You got to buy a new flight controller. Ugh, who wants to do that? But instead of just throwing up your hands or throwing down your credit card, you can just watch a video like this and I'll show you a solution that unlocks the capability for the stuff that you've already got. If you value this type of content, can I remind you that I have a Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. You know, YouTube income comes and goes, affiliate income comes and goes, but one thing that I can always count on is the folks who have decided they want to support me by making a monthly contribution of as little as $2 a month. Have I earned $2 a month? 12, 24, I can't math. $24 a year, have I earned that from you? Or $2 a month until you just decide to quit. Maybe it doesn't take you a year. It's totally up to you. You stop whenever you want. But if I'm worth at least $2 to you, then please consider going to the link in the video description below and signing up for my Patreon. It's a small amount to you, but it does add up to a lot over the number of people who watch my videos. And you know what? If I haven't earned it yet, that's cool. I'm not the kind of guy, I'm not gonna nickel and dime you. I'll just keep making content and I'll keep putting it out there and I'll just keep trying to earn it. 
You know, I put this video out to help anybody who needs the help, but this is actually part of my beginner build series where I teach you how to build an FPV drone from start to finish. It's the single best way to learn to build, configure, and maintain FPV drones. Even if you already know how to build, I'm gonna suggest you go to the card on screen or the link in the video description below and just watch the playlist. I'll bet there's tips in there that you'll learn. And if you've never built before, this is 100% the best way to do it. I'll see you there.